The May Day Parade is an annual celebration to recognize the contribution of workers in ensuring national development. This year it was marked at the Black Star Square under the theme Protecting Jobs and Incomes in the COVID-19 Era and Beyond. Speaking at the parade, Secretary General of the TUC, Dr. Anthony Alba, bemoaned the current state of the economy and urged the government to peg salaries in line with the prevailing rate of inflation. The workers and their families have fallen into poverty. If nothing is done about this situation, many more workers and their families will suffer severe poverty in the coming months. Brother Chairman, we think that this is the time salaries in both the private and public sectors must be indexed to inflation in order to avoid worsening living standards among workers and their families. This is the time Ghanaian workers must be paid a living wage. This is the time government and private sector employers should acknowledge the sacrifices Ghanaian workers have made in the last two years especially to save our economy from total collapse. In his speech, President Akufuado made a case for the collection of the controversial electronic transfer levy, e-levy. These measures, such as the passage of the e-levy bill, have not been introduced in isolation. They've come on the back of a revenue loss of 13.1 billion CDs and an increased unbudgeted expenditure of 14.2 billion CDs. There's thus an overall fiscal impact of some 27.3 billion CDs, representing 6.8% of GDP. He also ruled out the scrapping of taxes on petroleum products. On the vexed matter of petroleum price increases, the suggestion has been made, which has also been repeated by the Secretary General, is at this moment not sustainable. Removing taxes on petroleum products will reduce government revenues by some 4 billion CDs. At this time, when we're determined to expand government revenues in order to increase our capacity to finance our own development, can we afford to reduce government revenues by 4 billion CDs? Government is currently confronted by very tight financing conditions in the wake of inadequate domestic revenue mobilization. 